I'm really pleased to introduce Vida Midgelow to you, who is going to present a performative lecture titled Everywhere and Nowhere. Um, Vida is a dance artist and academic. She is Professor of Dance and Choreographic Practices at Middlesex University. And without further ado, Vida, over to you. I arrived here and I was taken with how I might coordinate. <laughs> And normally, I would have a chair, but the chairs are red. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I also normally would have water on the table, but no. Okay. Now you've seen it, maybe I can... <laughs> and, um, there's something else that needs to happen, but I need help with this, but... And I would normally put this down before, but you know, it looks so much more beautiful without. <laughs> but maybe we'll do it now. So we'll see. Was here good? Century as improvisation from French improviser Rorix Source, Italian improvise air from improviso extempore from Latin improvisions unforeseen based on provisions past participle of provide make preparation for improvise Verb. with object create and perform music drama or verse spontaneously or without preparation he invited actors to improvise dialogue no object he was improvising to a backing of guitar chords more example sentences at many of these events advanced students spontaneously improvise <coughs> or duets based on a theme given by audience members clark says audiences are more open to improvise music than people think Sometimes improvised music seems like selfish display of skills. Derivatives. Improvisatorium. Adjective. Improvisatory. Adjective. Improviser. Now. Improvised. Adjective. Created and performed spontaneously or without preparation, impromptu, an improvised short speech. Done or made using whatever is available. Makeshift. We slept on improvised beds. More example sentences. His performances were often freely given late at night, off the cuff, with an improvisatory air. When she is ready to begin, it begins. The process is spontaneous and improvisatory. There is scarcely a single field in music that has remained unaffected by improvisation. Scarcely a single music technique or form of composition that did not originate in improvisatory practice. From 1974 until about 1990, a large part of my compositional time was spent devising music for improvisers, what I now call game pieces. 
The improvisers must be quick of thought, but also high in energy. They must remain on high alert for hours, allowing them to react with some confidence and, hopefully, some humor. Synonyms. Extemporize and live, speak in property. Make it up as one goes along. Think on one's feet. Take it as it comes. Speak off the cuff. Speak off the top of one's head. Play it by ear. Busk it. Wing it. Impromptu. Improvisational. Improvisatory. Unrehearsed. Unprepared. Unscripted. Extempore. Extemporized. Spontaneous. Unstudied. Unpremeditated. Unarranged. Unplanned. On the spot. Ad lib. Latin ad libitum. Rare improvisatorial. Nearby words. Improvisator. Noun. A poet who composes or performs verse extemporaneously. Organ. Originally and chiefly with reference to the Italian tradition of improvisational poetry, which was at its height in the late 17th to mid 19th centuries. Improvised explosive device. Noun. A homemade bomb, especially one that is deployed by irregular troops or insurgents against a regular military group, abbreviated, I'd, I'd. Noun. A simple bomb made and used by unofficial or unauthorized forces. Explosive. Adjective. Able or likely to shatter violently or burst apart, an explosive device. Likely to cause an outburst of anger or controversy, Marco's explosive temper the idea was politically explosive. More example sentences, synonyms. Of a vocal sound, produced with a sharp release of air, Ruth let out an explosive sound of disbelief. More example sentences. Release. Verb. With object. Allow or enable to escape from confinement, set free. The government announced that the prisoners would be released. More example sentences, synonyms. Allow something to move, act, or flow freely. She released his arm and pushed him aside for the form. It's released into the blood during sleep. For the next 45 minutes, I'm going to think of sentences. For someone or something, so that they become available for the The sentences that address improvisation as a form of practice. Some sentences that might elaborate an understanding of an own transfixed disciplinary practice to move or function. He released the sentences. More example sentences. Example sentences about to return to its position by ceasing improvisation. Press the cap down and release. More example sentences. Some sentences. To be generally to appropriate and, and adapt to Tori Kerr, who has said feelings are not contrary to thought, made but thoughts made our own other product. Improvisation is not contrary to knowledge, but knowledge made our own sentences, synonyms, some sentences, limit or discharge, a debt, some sentences and some other performative modalities, some dancing, some reading, some talking. That might form sentences. Apparent released. I seek to draw out attention towards some underexplored processes property or and knowing to another. As improvisation is articulated as a critical, highly rigorous activity. Sentences. Example sentences. 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 Improvisation brings about particular ways of knowing and perhaps peculiar forms of subjectivity and agency. Opening such knowings from my perspective as a dance improviser rather than that of the spectator, I am re-searching, re-visiting and riffing in upside-down directions. For improvisatory processes provide an opportunity to go about things otherwise. What am I? What am I made of? What am I doing and what is the nature of my doing? What work do I do? 
What am I and what am I not? What am I if I am always in the making? What am I if I am never resolved? What am I if I am unknown and unknowable? What is the nature then of my unknowing? What am I? What am I when I am cast into the shadow of invisibility? What am I? middle-aged woman, white, mother of one teenage daughter, currently probably lying in bed, not doing her homework. <laughs> I am Alice, and I have lost my rabbit. this morning. I am your breaths, for we share one breath. I am here, sort of, somewhere between the page, my breath, and your breath. What am I? What kind of knowing does this body imbue? What kind of body does improvisation emerge from? Resisting the discipline in body as externally observed and controlled, I seek to dwell inside this body, inhabit and enrich its possibilities in kind and caring modes. I am a somatic body. I am a body mind seeking to ground itself, a body seeking to find connectivity and release. I am perhaps a releasing body. But as Susan Foster has said, that the released body is now, has now seen on the global stage, masked over cultural difference through the 
efficiency at its heart, in the supposed neutrality of its unmarked anatomy, I perhaps need to qualify the mode of embodiment. I am, as I say, a white, middle-aged, female body, trained in release techniques and other movement forms. I am a situated, situating body, recognising my lineage, experience and contextually specific roots. I share a similar body-mind to you, but each of us is shaped in our own ways. And perhaps we can all pay attention to the how of our bodies in this moment. We could dwell in the at times luxurious pleasure and at times painful grip of our body's own movement. Bring consciousness to the breath, to the touch of the arm on the body, to the fold in the armpit, to the press of the bottom of my feet to the floor or the touch of your pelvis to the chair. And perhaps the eyes can release into their sockets, thus opening our peripheral vision, increasing our awareness of the space around us and allowing us to see ourselves in the world, not just from the world from our own point of view, but to the edges, to the very edges of our vision. This is a changing body, an open body, as home. I am not this body, for I do not lie flat upon the page. So, what does it mean to be improvising? What is improvising made of? I've suggested elsewhere that improvisation operates through a nexus of features that together form a loose understanding of the form. Developed out of acts of dancing, I offer then a shifting nexus which entails a thematizing or theory building out of practice rather than applying theory to practice to offer a framework for an understanding of improvisation. These words that I'm going to share with you emanate out of release based approaches to improvisation, and the terminologies I use reflect this somatically informed place. There is, though, I think, a way in which these features can illuminate improvisation across forms, albeit with inevitably different emphases coming into play in each context. So, what are the languages, terminologies, principles and aesthetics at work? And I'm going to draw on them to do this a range of practitioners that some of you will know, others you might want to look up, of Julian Hamilton, Lisa Nelson, Eva Karsak, Rosalind Crisp, Kirsty Simpson, Nancy Stark Smith, a range of artists who have all been influential to my own practice, and all of which pursue a rigorous body mind approach to improvisation. And so to the features themselves. Improvisation, then, I propose, is inherently nomadic. I might need some help. It's going to have to be round the leg. Round the leg. <laughs> That's it. That's the leg. There you go. Perfect. Improvisation then has developed within discourse of fluidity and flexibility, for recurring feature of improvisation is a commitment to an ability to operate with change. For as dancer Eva Karsak writes, available to constant change, I can balance in the edge of the unknown and experience fearlessness. Thank you, Eva. I've described this openness in nomadic terms, for in line with the feminist scholar Rosie Brodotti, the nomad is the kind of subject who relinquishes all idea or desire or nostalgia for fixity. So like nomads, improvisers are comfortable with transition and change. They do not cling to illusions of stability in their dance. 
operating with a level of uncertainty, improvisers work to challenge their habitual patterns, reactions and perceptions, bringing about differently configured relationships to the body and to space, effectively working to transform established patterns and hierarchies to open to, open to change they are the ultimate nomad. Our next term, convergence. For an improvisation, composition and execution converge, blurring the boundaries of process and product, idea and realisation, research and its re-presentation. As such, the role of the choreographer and the performer, the activities of making and interpreting are simultaneous. For, as the interdisciplinary scholar Sophie Lycoris notes, Improvisation is a setting in which choreography and the body collapse into each other. Next term. Receptivity. Improvisation involves entering a space and believing something will happen. This something is based on listening, initiating, responding and redirecting. This willingness to be vulnerable and assailable enables the improviser to follow routes and note emerging pathways to catch that which becomes apparent in the moment and sparks the imagination. Novak notes and calls it a responsive state. Paxton calls it a habit of attention, and Kirsty Simpson says you have to be very, very alert, like an animal, so you can pick up quickly, pick up on movement and emotional shifts. It's a kind of becoming hyper, hyper alert. Next term, memory. The dancer is playing without memory, engaging in a purposeful act of remembering and forgetting, playing within the mechanics of her own body as ingrained within her bones, memories of past training, previous dancers and forms. Her dance is formed through both anatomical necessity and experience. She is drawing upon the string of events that have just happened during the improvisation and establishing new phrases out of those that have just occurred, playing across the body, space, time, as one remembered gesture is related to the next. Further images and associations of prior experiences often emerge while dancing that can, in giving themselves, give rise to further dancing. Yet, she is also engaged in these processes of forgetting, for as Ross Crisp tasks her dancers, as soon as something becomes familiar, move on. Irreversibility. That's dyslexic at work. <laughs> when improvising 
passing, there can be no regrets, no going over, no retouching or reshaping, it's all part of the mix. So mistakes become openings, for they cannot be crossed out. Rather, improvisers embody failure such that they work to see what happens when you amplify the mistakes, let them grow, see what that trip, fall, awkward gesture takes you when extended, repeated, enlarged. Such glitches cannot be corrected at the end from the outside. Processuality. Improvisations are processes in an essential sense. A process that unfolds whilst being invented. There can now be, sorry, that by invented whilst it occurs and vanishes even while it is occurring. The ongoing developing actions are ephemeral, irreversible, unrepeatable events. It arises, is developed while being aesthetically experienced, and then disappears, and never to be repeated. Word. Composition. Whilst much discussion of improvisation focuses on corporeal connectivity and being in the moment, often position improvisation in opposition to the choreographic, the awareness of form and the process of composition are crucial. Julian Hamilton says, Every movement has within it the seeds of another movement. It is a life form. It has within it a living structure. It is a strong discipline to follow that life and make that life manifest in the moment and not to lose it. In the course of an improvisation, continual feedback loops occur. So as the improviser tracks back and forth, making choices and changes of direction, choosing to stay with a thing or initiate a new, change location or relate to others. These are choreographic actions in the moment. On, um, transdisciplinary knowing. Dictionary wonders of the land to see, blind the SPLU. Control that is gained by requiring that rules or orders be obeyed and punishing bad behavior. The way of behaving that shows the willingness to obey rules or orders. Behavior that is judged by how well it follows a set of rules or orders. Take a two minute break to test your vocabulary. Full definition of discipline 1, punishment 2 obsolete, instruction 3, the field of study 4, training that corrects, molds, or perfects the mental faculties or moral character 5a, control gain by enforcing obedience or order b, orderly or prescribed conduct or pattern of behavior c, Self-control 6, a rule or system of rules governing conduct or activity. Discipline albion and adjective C, discipline defined for English language learners C, discipline defined for kids examples of discipline. 1. The teacher has a hard time maintaining discipline in the classroom. 2. 
The troops were praised for their dedication and discipline. 3. Some parents feel that the school's principal has been too harsh in meeting out discipline. 4. Keeping a journal is a good discipline for a writer. 5. Sir Robert Peel is credited with creating the first modern police force, the Bobbies, in London, in 1829, but the transformation of law enforcement, and especially forensic science, into a professional discipline was a haphazard affair. Jeffrey Tobin, New Yorker, the 7th of May 2007. 6. Pragmatism became America's most important contribution to the life of the mind in the 20th century. Filtered through scores of later interpreters, it percolated across a broad segment of academic culture and influenced disciplines as diverse as literary criticism and legal theory. Theo Anderson, Wilson Quarterly, Summer 2007. 7. So the next fall I went to Hampshire College and began studying under Herbert Bernstein. Without him, I would never have become a scientist. He shamed me into doing the hard work necessary to be able not just to talk about math and physics but to calculate. Without that discipline, my story would have been very different. Lee Smolin, Curious Minds, 2004-2005 Verb deceit like the SPLM, to punish someone as a way of making sure that rules or orders are obeyed, to train yourself to do something by controlling your behavior to seek mind and seek a full definition of discipline translative verb 1, to punish or penalize for the sake of enforcing obedience and perfecting moral character 2, to train or develop by instruction and exercise especially in self-control 3a, to bring a group under control with and discipline groups greater than B, to impose the order upon the than serious writer's discipline and refine their writing styles greater than. Discipline or Nancy discipline defined for English language learners examples of discipline. 1. She was disciplined for misbehaving in class. 2. He seems unwilling or unable to discipline his children. 3. I'm trying to discipline myself to eat less. 4. The army disciplined seven men for the incident, penalties ranging from pay cuts and loss of rank to dismissal from the rangers and return to the rank and file army. Gary Smith Sports Illustrated, 11 September 2006. 5. Volunteers have to undergo a program to discipline the mind and cleanse the soul. A pair is in God, done, the 4th of July 2005. 6. The teacher then took me to the principal's office. There, the principal attempted to discipline me with an old Catholic school technique called paddling. On all the members, undoing time, 2001. 7. Hide. The processes and concerns that improvisation and the disciplinary each promote 
are seemingly distinct and contradictory. For at first sight, discipline tells us that we are engaged in a rigid, known world in which we can comprehend significance, importance, correctness. Improvisation, on the other hand, resists <coughs> correctness and rigidity, tending to be positioned as that which cannot be anticipated, that which cannot be seen in advance, and cannot be ordered into known, fixed identities. How then can the unknown and the unfixed show us a way to knowledge? <clears throat> Unlike conventional knowledge formation, knowledge is not understood here as a fixed compendium of things to learn and techniques to master. And I use the gendered term purposefully here. <laughs> Rather, knowledge is understood to be dynamic and contextually embedded. Knowledge is not sufficient for us to master a static body of knowledge, but we must be capable of generating new knowledge, of functioning in a world where knowledge is always expanding and changing. And here, the benign forces of improvisation, of flow, of process, of embodiment, dialogue, are set against them fixity, objectification, rarification, detachment, singularity. Rethinking these ideas then in terms of dance, improvisation, I suggest, has far-reaching implications, offering us an embodied, critical approach that is at the heart of all knowledge generation. What am I? I am nothing. I am everywhere and I am nowhere. I am a way of going about things, for I have no subject. I am beyond all subjects, beyond all disciplines. I am undisciplined, un, undiscipline, in dis, dis, discipline, disciplinary disciple, a disciple, a follower, a believer, an adherent, a devotee, an acolyte, a blind follower of fashion, a crazed fan of Beyonce, a determined liar, a favoured daughter, a strict mother, a dab hand with a dibber, a fan of alliteration, a cruel taskmaster, determinedly devilishly stupid, I am the ultimate fool, a royal fool, I say what cannot be said, I am a slavish rambler, I am a walker, a tumbler, a cup, a series of associations tumbling, fumbling from one another. I am improvising, writing, fingers moving, pulsing, flowing words. The fingers stopped. I digress. <laughs> Australian writer and dancer Elizabeth Dempster argues that a dance happily suffers from a lack of disciplinary assertiveness an undisciplined discipline that is generative of unregulated knowledges and processes. And perhaps dance improvisation is more undisciplined than most forms of dance, for improvisation lacks a defined discourse, lacks a widely understood theoretical paradigm and commonly shared set of practical considerations, lacks regulation we're all making it up as we go along, <laughs> lacks the assurance of successful repeatability, lacks the clarity and security of anonymous authorship, lacks the appropriate distance from the body giving rise to somophobia, lacks codification into discrete areas of work, lacks the discipline of the choreograph, the detailed crafting into repeatable compositional figures, lacks, lacks, lacks. Yet, improvisation, is everywhere and nowhere. Founded upon intimate, intercorporeal, and personalized relationships, improvisers are self authoring dance artists working in movement systems and methodologies that are resolutely difficult to quantify, often purposefully resisting codified forms and easy to recognize choreographic structures that are aligned with institutionalization. Improvisation then has evolved often in non-institutionalized contexts, in messy, discordant ways, for improvisers skirt to the edges, finding alternative routes through. Thank goodness, I cry. I am sliding between the codifications of knowledge construction. I am slipping between the gaps, emerging only fleetingly and often going unseen, unnoticed. I seep everywhere. Thank goodness. 
For if to succeed in a discipline means being able to speak its genres and embody its myth, I cry out, I am thankful to remain undisciplined. For if becoming disciplined means entering the discourses that are in many instances patriarchal and somophobic to the core, perhaps we need to stay with this other way through. moment and to be clear, in emphasising the undisciplinary nature of improvisation, I don't mean to undermine the highly rigorous work that improvisers undertake, nor deny the epistemic work of improvisation as a more productive mode of inquiry. Indeed, the binary of the disciplined and the undisciplinary is of course a fallacy, yet being able to perform within and as a discipline there are risks not the least of which is believing in our own myths. And not wishing to reinforce the myths surrounding improvisation, I should perhaps rehearse them, just in order to dispel them. Myth one. Improvisation is about freedom. yourself on page. Cut words, let the dance speak. <laughs> Myth <coughs> two. Improvisation is only about the new and the novel. Myth three. Improvisation is unrehearsed and undisciplined. So to bring this to an ending, improvisation is beyond and perhaps the ultimate discipline that crosses into all disciplines, becoming perhaps ultimately transdisciplinary, 
And yes, that was four disciplines in one sentence so far, <laughs> about 40 to follow. <laughs> as a transdisciplinary practice, improvisation can and has been taken up across contexts beyond dance, beyond the arts, to offer a methodology for inquiry that could be shared across all disciplines. As the prefix trans indicates, transdisciplinary concerns that which is at once between disciplines, <coughs> across disciplines, and beyond all disciplines. Did you count? <laughs> to enable this transdisciplinary, sorry, to develop this transdisciplinary groove, improvisation may be considered an enacted process, furthered by repetition and training, an act of journeying, promoted through crafting and scaffolding, but above all is an act of knowing oneself in the world as affected by and at the same time affecting the new possibilities on offer. What am I? I am a key way in which humans interact and collectively adapt and communicate. I am a ubiquitous transcultural, transdisciplinary practice underlying what it means to be human. I am testing the limits of capacities to think new thoughts, to see beyond the constraints of current notions of knowledge. I am expansive, encompassing, yet I remain invisible. Thank you. Can I ask you about your reference to working with no memory? Yeah. And, and just to unpack those ideas yeah. a little more. Well, I deliberately position this play with and without yeah. memory, so it's about um, recognising um, that improvisation is absolutely located in all, all kinds of memory, both the immediate past um, of this moment, this space, of all our trainings, of all our backgrounds, of all the things we know and bring to this body that we bring into the space, but equally one of the things that we're working with is trying to tell, not to get past memory or get past those embodied memories because that's it's just not possible, but there is something about the way that we might be enacting activities that allow us to recognise those, those memories at play in our bodies. Mm. Okay, and, and does that tie in then to perhaps developing... <laughs> <laughs> so strong! <laughs> to developing the new and novel, as in myth too, the fact that... Um, not the fact, but the, the idea that by drawing upon those memories doesn't allow us to make new or novel, or that actually there's a... I would say absolutely, I there. would actually say the opposite, mm. that actually by recognising when we're working with those places, we can refigure. Mm. But if you don't work with an acknowledgement that you're carrying those things, mm. you can't refigure. So, um, I mean, it ends up in the territory... This is one of the nomadic anybody? Um, so improvisation doesn't tend to be thought of as a critical practice in the way of it can be actively engaging critical discourse, for instance. Because if you're forever only working with this um, immediate knowing, then it's really difficult to operate through deconstructed practices, for instance, that tend to be located elsewhere as a kind of a different, more cognitive process. I would suggest that actually that, we, you know, that cognition is only ever in our bodies, and if we are aware of those practices, we can also be operating with that act of deconstruction at the same time. Just by noticing. But noticing. Yeah. yeah. The decision to edit. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about that? Like, what was the experience of the realization like? So there's all sorts of editing going on. And I'm not sure which bits you're seeing. So there's constant process of editing in the, the movement choice, whether to continue with something, whether to not. There's choices of whether to... Um, I'm, I'm making choices as I read to cut out sections exactly. that are there and some not. Some of those are choices that I knew I was going to make, so they're not choices I'm making at the moment. 
Others are, okay, I'm looking at the time, I know I've only got 10 minutes left, I need to get a move on here, or I'm making a choice around, okay, this isn't resonating, this, going to be, this bit is going to be too theoretical, let's get rid of it. So they are immediate choices in response to a moment in the space, in response to the feedback and sense you're getting. Um, the experience of them in me, um, interestingly, is different, the movement edits are different sensation to the text edits. Very different sensation. Um, I think probably one, obviously, the text is something you think you know and you're choosing to change, whereas in the movement edits you never knew it. So they are definitely edits, but they sit more comfortably in the body. I just wondered if there was any points, because I, I improvise and choreograph and sometimes I set things and don't. And do you ever find there's parts that you've just done now where you think, I, I just, I didn't, I didn't like that, I didn't feel like this is what I want to say, or do you ever feel judgmental when you're improvising? Part of the practice is recognising that that is going on and whether that's a helpful interior judgment or not. Yeah. And I would align judgment, it's also attached to editing. These are actually about choices um, and being clear that you're, you know, you've made a choice. Um, or you find yourself in a place like, oh, well, what's this place about then? Um, and that might just be in the tone of voice, or it might be in a, something that's happening in movement that you feel like, okay, I've got to play this out. Um, or do I just drop it and cut? And they are, they partly come from, yes, there's always that judgment going on. I mean, isn't there in everybody in all we do in one way? Um, <clears throat> But in an improvisation, you, for me, you have to learn to take them as a positive thing, otherwise you'd never do it. Do you start off from a position of anger when you start? When you, when you start the improvisation and you're thinking about it, were you angry about something or hot about something? Or was there a sort of... I, I just wondered about the, the voice. And it just seems sort of like bureaucracy. It just seemed like, you know, that, that sort of like a discourse that's over everything. And you were sort of, yes, I'm going to get this. I'm going to find this. I'm going to do, do something with it. And I don't know whether that's... Does that mean anything? Um, I wouldn't call it anger. Critique, maybe. Mm. Anger sounds a different place. Where um, that is anger about quite certain right. types of discourses, maybe, or anger about certain types of tropes and... Narratives and um, I would say I'm critical of, of various tropes and narratives and the ways that um, the, the body finds it a difficult, you know, doesn't find a place into discourse, for instance, despite some wonderful feminist writers that have talked a lot about the body, it still isn't something that's easily acknowledged, easily written about, easily spoken about. Um, but I wouldn't call it anger, I would call it critique. Mm. You, you, you spoke as, uh, as part of this to, uh, to do with improvisation, which is about developing new knowledge and uh, embodied, uh, an embodied and critical approach, which I absolutely concur with. And then I think, okay, if I'm Joe Public, who may not be interested in that new knowledge, I just want to go and see a really cracking performance. I wonder how, I, I wonder what your thoughts are on, it, it feels like, um, Forgive me if this is provocative, but it was one of those days where we can speak openly and frankly. Yeah. Um, the, the, the kind of uh, the critical rigor feels like that also comes from quite a kind of academic perspective. And actually, if we're thinking about uh, improvisation being perhaps marginalised, then how might it become more popular? I think I'm going to do one of those things where I actually okay. it some other way. <laughs> Partly because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because one of the things that. Um, it doesn't necessarily help dance as a practice that an audience are engaged in. But in terms of understanding improvisation, if we start to recognise and really pay attention to how improvisation, the discourses of improvisation, and often mainly using jazz metaphor because it's been the thing that's most written about, it's been picked up across vast range. You know, you can find it in stuff around management, you find it in education, you find it in health, people talking about improvisation. Normally what they're not talking about is improvisation, one, in really dance terms and using the terminology of dance, 
because they're busy with their jazz metaphors, but actually even when they're using jazz metaphors, they're often not using them in nuanced ways. And so it becomes about um, immediacy and it gets trapped only into intuition and it gets... So the, and the frameworks and the structures that dance improvisers are really rigorous with to be able to improvise in front of an audience kind of get lost. So that's a sideways answer in that it talks about not it as, an, as a performance form, but how the practices get taken up and understood across a vast range of disciplines. Um, and that, I think, dance is not being heard in either, interestingly. Um, how then that affects what goes on in the art form, I have no answer for you. We're talking about bias, we're talking about racism, we're talking about a lot of things. Mm -hmm that the language that's been developed and the concepts that have been developed around it that we keep resisting are being laden upon the marginalized. Yeah. And that's part of what we're working with, you know. It, so all the stuff, is it intuitive? Of course it is, but it's also damn rigorous and prepared mm -hmm. and all of these other things that, mm -hmm. that any practice is. Mm -hmm. But how it's seen from the outside is often mm -hmm. just completely uh, covered in that kind of marginalization. Yeah. Whereas in terms of reading the presentation, which I know it, how it came about, so it's, purpose, it's not at all a purposeful choice, but as an audience, I'm seeing a male, beautiful cadence voice and three female performers, and I'm thinking about how, and one's holding discourse and one's holding yeah. movement, and I'm really interested in what does that do? So that's one side, one kind of challenge in terms of if performance is already a feminized form and improvisation must be the height of a feminized form, then where does that sit us politically? And then my other part of me goes, well, where does something like hip hop sit in that, which is this very generally masculine, non-white form, but as huge popularity as a performance form and as a practice, even when improvised, and it's not always improvised in the theatre stage, but even when improvised retains a level of popularity. And where is that in terms of those gender and race politics that that form manages to operate and these other, what we might call more feminised forms, don't still? We'll leave that one for further debate, perhaps. <laughs> Thank you very much, Peter.